Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about the mana source's response to criticism about promoting this particular card, this particular screenshot. And to understand this better, I have to detail what happened step by step. So a video goes out. This is part of that video. It says that you should buy Creeping Tar Pit, the original version for $15 from TCG Player, which is his main sponsor. TCG Player makes a percentage of sales, so they want cards to be inflated because if you sell a $15 card, assuming they get 10%, they get $1.50. If they sell a $7 or $8 card, they get $0.80. Cents. Now, this card has tanked. The question is, did the mana source know that the card was tanking and did he still, in his own words, promote a card he knew to his subscribers if they had purchased, based on his opinion and his demand, would go down? And the answer is yes. So you can stop watching the video, but here is the evidence. On November 6, 2018, he has hashtag MTG, hashtag MTG Arena. Hashtag Ultimate Masters. Ultimate Masters spoiler. New masterpieces, best reprints ever for Magic the Gathering! Exclamation mark. Now, this sounds pretty interesting, right? And here you can see the picture of the creeping tar pit in that video, which he cannot get rid of. I'm sure he wishes he can get rid of it, but he cannot. So, 40,000 people saw this, assuming that even 1% of them decided to take this opinion and buy just one copy, not place that one copy, he would have sold 400 copies of this card and made quite a bit of money. So I'm not sure how his sponsorship works. It is not transparent. Uh, how much of a kickback does he get? Does he get paid monthly? Well, on November 5th, Creeping Tar Pit actually was spoiled. So Creeping Tar Pit was spoiled November 5th. The video goes out November 6th. And I know what a lot of you are going to say. Maybe he made the video before the Creeping Tar Pit got spoiled. So I went one level deeper. Remember, the video is about Ultimate Masters. The first time Ultimate Masters was spoiled was on... November 3rd. And out of those cards, you had a Sterling Wildwood, Celestial Colonnade, and I believe Lava Claw Reaches. So you had them all. And it would be very easy for you to make the conclusion that, hey, we're not missing any in the set in Raging v Ravine. It makes sense that Creeping Tar Pit will be the last one. Now, was his speculation that Creeping Tar Pit would not be in the set? That you would have four out of the five original mainlands? So here we see on November 3rd, uh, and a lot of these cards appear in his video, we have Colonnade, we have Lava Claw, we have Sterling Wildwood on the bottom, and Raging Ravine. So we have four of the five that we know that he knows, regardless of when he made the video. He had to make the video after November 3rd because he uses these cards to make the video. And at November 3rd, he knows that four out of the five and the only one missing is Creeping Tar Pit. Now, had Creeping Tar Pit not been reprinted, it would be the genius MTG Finance move. It would be the best MTG Finance move because it would be completely unexpected and the price of Creeping Tar Pit would actually, I mean, I don't even know what to say if you print four out of the five and the fifth one is the, actually the one of the more valuable ones. Obviously, Celestial Colonnade is the most valuable. So I'm doing a step-by-step -step analysis showing you that yes, at the point of the video, he knows Creeping Tar Pit is very likely, if not at uh, November 5th, depending on when the video was made, is in the set. Wedge writes, but let's talk about how he addresses this. 
So maybe you made a mistake, maybe you promoted a card that you should not have promoted. The real question is, how does Weds address this issue? Does Weds take it seriously? Is he going to apologize to his subscribers? Or is he going to use snark? Writing a financial advice video about MTG Ultimate Masters, this set is truly absurd for reprint value. Just wow, honestly insane. I tried to say it would be, but was drowned out by loads of players upset about the MSRP. So one of the my takeaway points of uh, Wedge giving financial advice is uh, one of the things I always tell my workers and employees and whoever my coworkers when I had them, uh, they you know you never want to eat at an empty restaurant. You never want to eat from a skinny chef because a skinny chef may not enjoy food, right? Like a a larger chef theoretically would be testing his own food, would be traveling to eat all different types of food. Now, this is not 100% accurate, but it gets the point across. You wouldn't want to take financial advice from someone who is in a financial dire situation. Um, that would not be, you know, good. Here we have shame. You did not think of this for creeping tar pit finance suggestion. Question mark. You already forgot. When the mana source suggested subscribers buy creeping tar pits from TCG player 15 to 20 right after news of the reprint. Haha, -ha, did you watch? It was really snarky. <laughs> I mean, so a guy who is traditionally incredibly snarky says that this is really snarky and from the the tone, I guess, you were supposed to uh, understand that you were not supposed to buy creeping tar pit. Although the end screen was a giant $15 price tag on a creeping tar pit with links to buy it. Huh. So when M when um, the Mana Source makes videos about talking about Pico Trade, I guess it was very snarky and he didn't want you to sign up so he can make tons of money. So like it doesn't make any sense logically because the Mana Source with his relationship with TCG player makes money I assume based on what he sells or with the under, even if that's not true, if he doesn't sell enough for them, they will drop him because that's how sponsorships work. You have to give the sponsor something. And in this case, it's your integrity. So I talked about how Colony was the only man land that people wanted. So I made a joke about pit at the end. Okay, so if this was truly a joke, why did you put TCG player on it? Like, why wouldn't you just say, oh, buy this card, haha, it will be reprinted. Why would you brand it like that? It doesn't seem like a joke. You think people should be taking financial advice from an e-beggar, gonna name your video how to play on people's generosity for fun and profit? Gotta give your credit. Your absolute lack of self-awareness has granted you some huge blank blank. The cards of card prices of Ultimate Masters single boxes is probably going to drop significantly. Can anyone confirm that? So, Wedge, someone who does not understand finance at any uh, at a personal level, which is probably more important than MTG Finance. So, if we were to pick which would you rather be? Would you be really good at MTG Finance or good at your personal finance? I think all of us would choose personal finance, right? Um, who may or may not have health insurance even now after a massive set of donations who reported tax income is below the tax penalty for not having health insurance, which is a society thing by Obama, who he loves, is giving us financial advice on what children's card game to buy. Let me repeat that again, because it sounds like unreal. Someone who is not able or not willing to afford health to buy health care insurance, although he needs it, although he will admit that he needs it, who travels against a doctor's warning and tweets about how much he loves his community. And that's why he's, quote, traveling, um, who went to two different. Again, one convention is bad enough two back-to-back -back 
is something else. And to claim that you cannot work because you have IBS and that prevents you from working, well, I can tell you traveling, uh, you work, there's a bathroom within a very close space to you, probably, you know, at least where, where I work, the office, uh, even our card shop has a bathroom and that's a card shop. <laughs> well, I guess most card shops do, I assume because it's customer facing, but um, everyone has a bathroom, right? I used to work at the Lyric Center and we didn't have a bathroom in our office, but there was a bathroom like in the hallway um, and you could get there in 10 minutes. So something where you could get a job and work uh, and go to the bathroom, the bathroom would be literally five minutes away from any workplace, typically speaking. Uh, he can't even do that, but he can get on a plane, he can go to Las Vegas, he can eat a fancy meal, he can go to GP for a whole day. Some things are really not adding up. Um, and this financial thing, that the fact that he rebranded himself as a financial guru, I mean, guys, like, I want you to really think about this hard. Like, really, really hard. Would you, if this guy was your financial advisor, if you knew your financial advisor believed in student loan forgiveness because you have so many student loans you can pay for uh, majored in something that was maybe not relevant to today's uh, job market and lived at home with his parents uh, married someone from the uk after meeting them one time in person would you trust them with your retirement fund would you be like all right Weds insurance or Weds mutual fund, would you trust this person? Because that's what you're doing. Um, in a, another video, he's telling you to buy about $1,000 of cards, and he does not use the term invest. Um, he uses the term buy them cheap. I mean, that's, a, that's kind of a scapegoat. I don't really like that uh, because it defeats the game of MTG Finance. I, I've always enjoyed MTG Finance. I don't like the community very much. But I've always enjoyed MTG Finance as a standalone kind of fun game. Well, it's very easy to say buy things when they're cheap. Um, it's very hard to tell people how to sell things when they are high. So there, it's two pieces of the puzzle. One piece is a slightly easier, especially with reprints in the second piece. How do you sell magic cards? What are the margins? You have to watch your shipping. How long does it take you to go to the post office? etc. And that's never really gone through. It's always buy, 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 buy. And that's quite curious how it's set up this way for him, at least. So the sponsorship with TCG player is unknown. Um, and he jokes about this all the time, but I would want people who are sponsored, I want to know what you receive. Um, I went over this with the monthly magic box. And the only reason I made a video saying that they were getting paid in cash was because I assumed Tolarian Community College and Wedge and all these people making a video telling people lies essentially had to be paid in cash. Otherwise, why would they do it? But it turns out they only receive a free product. I would love to know how many eventual points Wedge got from Puka Trade. I would love to know how many points Tolarian Community College got and spent on Puka Trade. Those aren't his cards he's putting in the system. Those are points he got received as bonuses from signing people up. Um, I would love to know what TCG players, how they pay him. Do they pay him monthly regardless of what it is? Do they pay him per sale? Does, do they do both? There's a lot of payment structures that might influence why he's saying creeping tar pit or why he may not. From TCG players perspective, it is absolutely in their advantage to sell creeping tar pit for $15, not for 8 because they take a percentage of the commissions. They need to sell cards for as much money as possible. It keeps the seller or, or the, the vendor happy, which is good, uh, which is client side. And then it keeps the buyer happy, which is customer side. So we will see. I mean, we will see all about this. Uh, but it is quite interesting where we got, um, we got to this point. And I wanted, you know, there's so many different other examples I can use, but this one is very clean cut. It's very by the numbers. A card was recommended to buy. 
the excuse of it being snarky, I don't think implies. I think an obvious, uh, a logical human being can look at the ad and say, if it was snarky and a joke, why does it? Why is it branded this way? And you brand it the same way as why would the brand be want to be associated with the snark, right? Like the video was probably approved by TCG Player before being published, um, and or at least. If TCG player had a problem with it, they could take down the video. It was probably shown to them earlier on because they are his main sponsor. So, man, he receives 85, 90K in donations and, uh, from his subscribers, his loyal fans, and then he makes a video knowing that the card he's going to recommend at the end is going to plummet into oblivion. And the, the numbers don't lie, and that's the beauty of this. Pico trade, I will never know how many Pico points he had. I can set the minimal at at least $15,000 because that is the minimal bonus that he would get. But who knows what additional bonus, what additional cash, what additional incentives. I mean, that's one of the things that like I get criticized a lot. But if it's not transparent, I can only guess at what these people are receiving. Anyway, bye guys.